my name is Tomislav Zelac, uh, and I make um, video games entirely in Python, which is sort of my claim to fame and uh, why I'm here today uh, with you. Um, and the idea is to have a discussion about whether making video games entirely in Python is in fact uh, a, a viable proposition for us. And uh, I have uh, three guests uh, with me joining us. Uh, there's Roberto, uh, who is the author of the Unreal Engine Python plugin. I get that right? He's also a lecturer at the Italian Academy of uh, Video Games. Uh, we get Emmanuel. Uh, he's the author of the plugin for, uh, well, no, it's a wrapper for the Godo engine. It's a Python wrapper for the Godo engine. Yeah, basically, uh, using Python inside the Godo. All right. And we have, I'll, 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 we'll get to you. And then we have Martin, who is, uh, who is a lecturer and a tutor in uh, Python and 3D. Uh, so, so, guys, my question, and, and I'm thinking, I was thinking how to start this was, uh, to sort of take this from, from the back end, let's sort of uh, start with some strong statements and then we'll try to defend them later. Um, and so just to try to pose uh, this, this question immediately and ask you to give me an, an answer on like one to 10. Uh, like make, making these games in Python, mission impossible, one to 10 and then why and then we'll try to see maybe from Hi everyone. So from my point of view, the most important thing is uh, um, making some kind of difference between uh, indie game and a AAA game. They are pretty different from uh, the result to the money spent uh, over them. In my opinion, making indie games with uh, Python, with only Python, is absolutely possible. On the other side, making AAA game only with Python could be a really, really, really hard uh, challenge. One? <laughs> oh, it's, it's really hard even to define what uh, a Hindi team is. Nowadays we have Hindi team with a lot of money. Five, <laughs> four or five people with uh, really <laughs> thousands uh, of uh, dollars uh, invested in, um, in them. So for an indie team, I mean something uh, uh, less than 10 person and with zero money. For me, an indie team is something that do, uh, does not have uh, money. Uh, an indie team works only with passion. This is my own opinion, obviously. Uh, me, I, I think it really depends on what you are defining when you say entirely in Python, because if you dig enough in the end, you always end up finding some C somewhere. So the only question is, what is the sweet spot between the part you are doing in C and the part you are doing in Python? So I think it's entirely doable to have a lot of your game logic written in Python, like uh, they do in F Online, for example. Uh, so yeah, I would say if you if you thinking making a game means making game logic and not writing a game engine, I think it's entirely doable into Python. And that's why I want to prove by putting Python into Godot. Ah, and I should give a, a mark. So I would say eight out of 10. So I would give it a 10 if you give me 10 million euro. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, of course, it depends what you want to do. If you want to create a triple A game, uh, no, unfortunately not. If you want to make a mobile game, uh, yeah, I would give a one to three, <laughs> unfortunately. And, um, but for, for an indie game, I think there is some chance. If you, if you say, I want to make a, a game for Mac OS, for Linux, okay, Linux also don't really pay for games. Okay, sometimes I do. And and um, Windows, um, then okay. I was in the game industry some years ago, and it's really like this: Mac Mac users they they spend the most money on on games. So I would I would make a Mac game, put it in the in the Apple Store, and there I'm sure they would 
that would be uh, a big interest. If the game is good, if it's an indie game, yeah, I would give it a seven. Now the question is, why would I use Python to create that game? Is it really necessary? Wouldn't it be cheaper to just buy a license of Unity 3D or any other um, engine? So if I go to an investor, I think he would say, no, please take Unity or whatever. If it's me, I, I would like to use Python, okay, yeah, but we have to think about that too. So, yeah, so it depends what, from ranging from one to 10. Okay, so that's a, that's a sort of broad range of answers. Um, I, I have to sort of admit that I, I agree with Martin that um, it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a bit of a stretch to to do everything in Python, uh, which incidentally is, is what I do in my games. So implement the whole rendering and all of that in Python uh, for various reasons, which I hope we'll have time to cover. That doesn't it's really hard to do. Um, but but uh, you know I can gather from you guys that there is there is um, you know there is hope um, so uh, maybe maybe um, sort of try to be informative and, and and describe everybody each one of us has been doing some approach uh, Roberto you've been doing Unreal Engine you have been working on on Godot which is has similarities with Unity uh, obviously uh, uh, Martin and I have had approaches which is more like directly working with OpenGL. So just a few quick words on, on, on each approach uh, so that you know people who don't necessarily know what it entails to, to work with each one. So just a few quick words on, on, on everybody's approach. Uh, it's a strange uh, term, hope, for me, because it's like saying, uh, is there hope for using Python as the language for your, uh, uh, for your browser instead of JavaScript? Uh, making a game or generally making a software does not necessarily um, require a single technology. There are, there are technologies better suited than, uh, than others and so on. From my point of view, uh, there are some parts uh, um, of building a, a game and its game engine that can be done uh, in a really good way with Python and other parts, especially from the engine side, that, that, mm, that not came so, out so good uh, uh, when using uh, such a high-level uh, language. Uh, last year, at uh, Europython in Bilbao, I gave a talk about uh, um, OpenGL, all in Python. It, absolutely, it is, uh, it is something that we can, uh, we can do. But uh, nowadays, there are a lot of technologies high-level technologies. I, I'm thinking about the NVIDIA technologies uh, like VRWorks, uh, the simulation of uh, clothes, uh, hair, uh, and so on that um, are really performance uh, intensive. So from this kind of tasks, uh, we cannot expect a higher level language like Python, JavaScript. Every uh, higher level language can be, can be used in this day. We can have hope in the sense that um, future computer can be way pow more powerful than nowadays computers, so we can even use uh, uh, less fast language uh, instead of uh, um, relying on languages like C or, uh, or C++ for doing uh, uh, high CPU intensive tasks. This is the only hope I think we can have, better hardware for using software that is not so fast. I just wanted to move, ask before we move on. Uh, sh sure, the, the, uh, a big engine like Unreal packs a lot of punch. It does physics, it does all these simulations, and it's kind of difficult to imagine all of this intensive CPU side code being done in Python. But what about a future in which all these little systems sort of exist as um, like well-defined well Python modules? I know it's fanciful, but just in theory, couldn't that be um, a future that exists? Uh, yeah, it could be. My company released uh, a bunch of years ago uh, a, a Python wrapper for a bullet physics library. I don't know if you know it. It's a pretty famous uh, physics library. Use it even in a GTA. Uh, so yes, it could be something uh, we, we can do. 
I don't remember what was the question in the first place. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I think um, yeah. Like you said, there is really two like uh, schools. There is the one who wants to make uh, to use Python as a, really the, the first language and write everything inside Python, and the other one who kind of plug from an existing engine and just want to extend this engine with Python. So I'm part of the second school, and the great thing with Godot is the code is clean enough to just separate the engine and what should be the scripts system. And so you can really write your scripts with multiple language. And uh, the really great thing is maybe you can even think about uh, Python like uh, a part of your development process. And it won't be in the final project, uh, product because uh, you find that it's too slow maybe. But during the development, if you could use Python to just try really fast some ideas, I think it could be really like boost um, the development, like try new ID and so on, and you end up in the end rewriting everything in C++ in the last months of the development of your game. Yeah, I used the approach to, to use OpenGL bindings. So OpenGL is a very old standard of computer graphics. Um, every big um, uh, GPU supports it, like Nvidia, AMD, and so on, Intel. And, and I think it's possible to, to create um, good games using pure OpenGL um, bindings, so pure Python with OpenGL bindings. Okay, it's not pure anymore, but we call these, these things and it works. However, the problem is, as I mentioned before, if, if I create a big game project and, and I want um, to, to submit it to an app store, iOS, Android, etc then I will fail with that approach. And, and that's something I want to ask you too. What would you think about that? If, if in future, I mean, if I publish a game, I don't know if it's a big success and the next step is I want to, to publish it to the App Store. So what, what do I do? And that's my, my big question about that. If I, if I do it entirely with Python, then I'm limited in, in that. Well, well, I can tell you that um since we're uh, making a game and publishing it on Steam, obviously on, on Steam it's a PC platform. You, you don't really have limitations on Python. You're fine. You distribute your code, you distribute your Python, you distribute your modules. Um, Linux, Windows, Mac almost comes for free. Um, I, the, the, uh, at the time uh, that I, I released um, our, our, our biggest game, it was, uh, it was a question like whether we want to move to iOS and technically, it was possible to put everything on iOS, but at the time, there was a big uncertainty about whether Apple would let you um, let you have Python on an iOS device. I understand that at this point, it's, it's not a problem, it's allowed, um, but perhaps someone in the audience will know a, a more up-to-date uh, information, uh, but because I don't know, for example, on, on, on the PlayStation, does this work? Um, a lot of these, uh, stores and ecosystems are not really happy about um, interpreted code um, and, and, and bringing stuff in. So, so yeah, it, it could be a risk. And, and I think, I think you guys, uh, uh, it's sort of, um, it, it's, a, it's a, I think a more fundamental question then is uh, why, why use Python? I mean, there, if you want to make a game, you could use other languages. Uh, obviously, we're here at the Python conference. That's what we're interested. But um, I think if, if you're talking to somebody who just wants to make games, uh, there's a question of why Python. And uh, there are good reasons, I know, but we'll, we'll talk about them. I just wanted to ask uh, any people who work in video games with us right now? There's one? There's you, I know you. Just two? Three? Okay. Uh, it's it's this, this is this is what it is for a for a Python conference this time. I hope there will be more. Um, and so so I think th there are other things in in a in a video game company that Python gets used for. And you know, Roberto, you you, you had things to say about that. So I think you could just uh, we can just discuss it because the, the the big the big appeal of Python is that it gets used throughout the the development process. 
and that's why it would be perhaps good to put more of it into the actual gameplay. So, so uh, yes, in the video game industry, Python, Python is all, um, basically one of the reference script uh, languages uh, in use, especially um, from uh, the artist's point of view, where they used to my other 3DS Max. Um, um, blender and and so on. Uh, basically, I st still have to met uh, animators that do not script their uh, pipeline uh, their pipeline work. Well, from uh, um, again from my point of view, programming is a lot about automating tasks. So uh, personally, it's not a huge problem for me. Uh, that I cannot script my engine uh, with a higher level uh, language, but it is very important for me that I can use uh, a higher level language, uh, which I don't need to compile, uh, wait a lot, uh, having in con in, um, uh, strange uh, error, uh, have, um, having to pay attention to any single line I write and, and so on. Um, Having the possibility to use such a, a language to uh, automate and simplify my work is really, really important. More important than the ability to use it for every part of my, of my, of my work. Something. Okay, so, so that's, the, that's, the, that's one part of it. That's the, uh, a, a lot of people who already work in the industry will know. Um, Will, will know the language and, and, and as a looking I have like a, a list of things that, that you can use uh, you know sure you can script your asset pipeline that's very useful uh, your testing uh, a lot of people use it for uh, server side applications uh, for games which are um, depending on what your game is that can be really important um, one thing that I've done and uh, Martin you're a bit of an expert for is we import a lot of uh, geographic data if your, uh, if your game has, is on a map, that will happen. Um, so as, as part of a broader question, uh, which is, um, y you know, how is Python beneficial? Because it gives you access to a lot of tools that are in the Python system. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a question for you, Martin. You work with uh, Geo. Um, so you, you can use that in your game. It opens up a lot of possibility, doesn't it? Yes, for, for data processing, uh, Python is, is really one of the best ways to go. So we, uh, I, I developed um, a virtual globe some years ago, similar to Google Earth, and there we had to process terabytes of data for, for the visualization afterwards. And uh, we use Python on a, on a high performance computing system and we processed all the data there and it was really great and, and the code is, is really maintainable. But that's not for actually the rendering. The rendering was done um, in the web browser using WebGL. So, so <laughs> that's, that's pity, um, but it's like it is. And, but for the data processing part, it's, it's cool. There are many libraries like GDAL, the Geodata Abstraction Library, for example, where you can load the different data sets, et cetera, et cetera. It's really, it's really a, a, a cool way. Please go on, I need to fix okay. that. <laughs> Change back to, okay. And uh, for the data uh, processing part in general, um, I recommend using Python for the visualization part. We, we had to use WebGL um, because it, it ran in the web browser. It's very simple for that project. Okay, so uh, uh, w w when we discussed, I also saw an interesting demo uh, on your own uh, talk. Uh, which, uh, which again, uh, because you were importing Python into Unreal Engine, you were able to access OpenCV. Um, so, you know, could you talk a little, bit, a little bit more about that and just the possibilities, like, that it gives you uh, just by importing just stuff unrestricted from the Python system? I think one of the advantages of using Python in a game development pipeline is the amount of third-party libraries that are available, especially in the scientific uh, area. Artificial intelligence, big data management, and, uh, and so on. Uh, 
libraries that generally are not available uh, in uh, other languages or became really painful to use uh, using lower level uh, languages. Um, embedding uh, a Python virtual machine into a uh, professional uh, game engine allowed me and the users to import uh, uh, that libraries and use them uh, into something visually really powerful. This morning, this morning we, uh, we have seen a talk about data, a keynote about data visualization. I was already thinking about uh, how uh, much better could be that, uh, that data into a real engine. We are, we are seeing uh, uh, straight line as trees. In my mind, uh, we can reproduce the whole earth <laughs> with trees, uh, uh, with the real sides, with the ri uh, right kind of tree, and, uh, and so on. So, uh, something way more big in, uh, in scale that we can, uh, we can do now. So, uh, the real uh, advantage now of using Python into an engine, a real engine in Godot, it's the uh, possibility to use this, uh, this kind of, uh, of libraries. I don't know if you want to add I, I think it's something really interesting because it means that you are bringing a, a game engine to people using Python, which means uh, you are bringing it to scientists, people that are used to, used to in the past, use R and then they go to Python now. And so, yeah, it means really new possibility for them, I think. Uh, I'm personally working in my day job with people from this scientific background and are uh, always like, they want new way to, to show the data and for the moment they, they don't even think about uh, game engine because it's for game, it's not for working. Uh, I just wanted to ask, you guys sort of represent the faction here that sort of does, uh, takes an existing uh, very capable game engine. Uh, in your case it's a free engine, Godot. Uh, in your case it's like an industry standard, top of the line engine, not free, but super. Um, and so you represent this faction and, and sort of I get it that it's wonderful. I, I sort of do the other thing, but I have to like, okay, you guys defend your side, but it's wonderful. But uh, I, in both of your talks, I noticed that there are like considerable technical difficulties um, in making that work because both projects are recently less than a year old. And uh, you, you know, you hear the same complaints, uh, they're like, two garbage collectors, I, I think, in both projects. Um, then uh, there's the issue of, you know, performance. Do we want to go with JIT, uh, with the PyPy? So a, a lot of issues sort of come up with that. Um, and so maybe just um, shed some light on that. Uh, is, is this, are we, are we sort of condemned to that? Are we like, uh, two garbage collectors, <laughs> does this really have to be? Uh, just some input on that. Well, I think we have been both really unlucky because we are a pioneer. We are the first people trying to do something like, uh, like that. I suppose now that uh, a real engine Python plugin is way more mature, a lot of wrapper for the languages will, uh, will come out because uh, now I've made a lot of research for them so they can start working on their, uh, on their wrappers. And the same uh, for, the, for the good old wrapper, uh, I suppose now we will see a lot of more uh, scripting languages uh, that will uh, come out. Yes, uh, we are condemned, but now we have some tech info, we have some kind of literature to allow other people to do this work without so much pain uh, that we have to, to do. I think the trouble was uh, Python was added to an existing engine, uh, but I mean, it would be really simple thing to just create an engine in C++ when syncing that the high level scripting will be due in Python from the beginning, like uh, is doing uh, Pandas 3D. I didn't try it personally, but I think it, if something, somebody has experience with it, that would be really interesting. Panda. Pandas 3D. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Panda 3D is uh, another engine uh, uh, used a lot by Disney in the past. Now Disney has moved to <laughs> other engine. Uh, it's allowed to be scripted in uh, Python from the beginning. So it's uh, architecture allowed for, uh, interact for high interaction with Python. Uh, um, it is a pretty specific case. Uh, 
I have to say that uh, the Epic staff, the guys making uh, Unreal Engine, has been very supportive with me. So they even made some bunch of uh, modification to the engine to allow his integration with, um, with scripting. And even the Godot engine uh, added new features to allow, <laughs> big features to allow uh, integration with, um, with other languages. Uh, Panda 3D loses a bit of traction nowadays that we have uh, Unity, Unreal, Godot, that are way more, uh, more powerful. But as far as I know, Panda is one of the first uh, uh, big engine with, uh, with a strong Python uh, support. Does anyone know the situation with, with Unity and, and Python? Let's know. Yeah, there is yeah. I heard that uh, some guy working on PyPy has just started to work on Unity and Python, but uh, he's not in the room, unfortunately. But if you, if you find some PyPy guys, uh, you can ask him directly. But it's just uh, really uh, a start for the moment, but maybe it will go somewhere eventually. I'm really curious about how they can do it without sources. Because both Unreal Engine and Godot have sources, so how could they do with the Unity? It's, it would be really interesting to, to know this. Uh, by the way, uh, Unity uh, up to the fourth uh, version came with a um, uh, Python-like language, Boo. I don't know if you ever, uh, okay. Then they removed the support because no one used it and <laughs> don't want to use some sub-version of, uh, of Python. Uh, okay, so, so uh, Martin, you and I are on, on the side where we want to do everything in Python. We, uh, we do, we create our own rendering loop, uh, we call naked OpenGL functions, and you know, we send our, you know, our, our data, our buffers and our textures and have it all rendered. Uh, you know, well, the last of the romantics. Um, I, I, uh, I think that uh, the fact that there are not many games out there that do that sort of speaks for the fact that it's not straightforward to do. But uh, uh, we, we chatted before, Martin, and you said that um, you know a big part of the appeal uh, of of using of doing all of that in in Python is the sort of uh, instructional value, because you also teach. So um, and, and and in my experience, I taught myself uh, OpenGL by by developing in in Python. So um, you know, maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, OpenGL is really hard to learn, especially today. Maybe, okay, OpenGL is old. The first version came out in, in the early 1990s. Uh, it was a time there were no GPUs yet, so you could all, also use, only use the, the CPU for rendering. And this standard is actually still the same today. However, there are many extensions and new versions, and the current version 4.5, has many new things, and if you want to learn version 4.5 today, you have to program maybe, let me say, three to 500 lines of code just to render one single triangle. You don't only have to program in Python, you have to learn shading languages, the OpenGL shading language. You have to understand the concepts there, you have to understand there, you have to learn many mathematics, you have to be good in vector math, in, in, a matrix multiplication and projections and so on. It's really very, very hard to get into. And um, it's not possible to learn that in, in half an hour. And that's, that's a really big issue. And learning OpenGL today is, as I said, even harder than it was before. So the best way would be to start learning the old version and then propagate, but that's, that's not really a good solution. <laughs> so so um, you need time. And, and um, I, I'm teaching computer graphics and, and I know the difficulties. Uh, sometimes I, I also don't know where to start. Do you start with the OpenGL shading language or do you start with OpenGL the basics? It, it's really a tough, so you sort of need much time to invest if you want to create your own um, render engine. So the best way to go, in my opinion, today is 
get Unity or another uh, engine and learn principles there. And then if you understand the basic principles of transformations of, of, of all these things, then you can try to create your own thing in OpenGL. That's my, my advice today. But, but it, <clears throat> it doesn't seem that the future is getting any simpler. We have a new uh, uh, API, the Vulkan API. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know how many of you are following the um, uh, the developments there. Uh, the Vulkan API is, is uh, designed to be the new standard by the Kronos group, the same group that developed OpenGL. And it's an even more low-level API, uh, which gives you a lot of power. Um, and I suppose it's even more difficult to learn. I, and again, I'm thinking, um, I think you worked with the Python bindings for it. Uh, it I understand it's very complex. Uh, I, I didn't work with it. Uh, but again, we're going to need a good teaching tool just to just to grasp the complexities of it. it it's really it's a really big, nasty piece of uh, code. Yeah, the Vulkan API is even harder than, than OpenGL 4.5 to learn. You need even maybe one to 200 lines more code to render one single triangle. So, but if you, if you understand these principles, then it's, it's easy. So, so to make two triangles, you need only 501 lines of code, for example. So, so it, it, gets, it gets easier. Um, but all, all the, the it's, it's a low level API, so you have to do all things yourself. You have to create your, your models, your projection systems, and so on. It's really very low. So to get started, I don't recommend um, using Vulkan API at the moment, especially not using Python. We have to wait maybe next year or in two years and there's stable binding available. Are you, are you saying there's an issue with the binding? Because I, I, I think that there's an issue with the drivers themselves, but the implementation of Vulkan. Uh, it's still t uh, my, my issue is still too early at the moment. There is uh, almost no documentation, and it's, it's, the drivers are not really very stable at the moment. We have to wait a little bit to, to, uh, until the, the big graphics companies um, distribute new versions, and, and then we can start creating a, a good binding. There are, I think, two bindings available at the moment, but they are not very good maintained, uh, Python bindings are not very well maintained, so someone has to step up and say, yes, I create a, um, a binding and, and I will maintain this for the next five to ten years. Okay. So, 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 uh, so I think on our, on our side, the, the, the kind of people who want to really do everything in Python, the answer is still OpenGL, no matter the complexity. And then to complete the whole application, you would need either Pygame uh, or uh, myself, I use PySDL2. Uh, SDL is a high quality library that handles uh, events and, and, and all related stuff. Uh, the wrapper is really straightforward. So you can use PySDL2, that gives you portability on all platforms. Uh, and because I've used Python, I would say that uh, uh, it's a little bit low, more low level, but it's uh, really good and I'd recommend it over PyGame. It's just a touch, touch more complexity. Uh, but I would say that that's, that's the so if you want to do this kind of an approach, that, that's the, the solution right now. Yes, <clears throat> yes. I, I would recommend starting with 2D games, using Pygame, um, creating really simple games to, to uh, understand the principles, how a game actually works. And then if, you're, um, if you know the basic principles, go on and try OpenGL bindings with Python. Okay. Um, it's so, uh, you, you, know, you know, my takeaway, although everybody's optimistic, I think everybody's a little bit more optimistic on the, on the plug-in side of things. Uh, this seems to me that right now it's a more realistic approach to get Python into an existing engine and have really nice plugins that will give you uh, access to, to the whole uh, to the whole ecosystem. And, and I understand, uh, Roberto, you've been doing work with uh, AAA Studios that use your plugin, but uh, not necessarily for gameplay uh, events. So could you, could, maybe somebody's using it? You, you, you'd know if they're using it. You don't have to mention names, just, uh, yeah. yeah, just, yes, you know, maybe. 
As far as I know, none of the AAA studios that is using the plugin is using it for the, um, the gameplay. Uh, they are not even using blueprints in Unreal Engine. This is a visual scripting tool. They still prefer to use C++ because it is an industry that is spawned to C++ by backends. So it's really hard to, um, to remove this kind of um, mindset. And they do not even see a reason to, to remove C++ from their uh, gameplay logic because they have good programmers uh, with, uh, with it and they have performance that are very important for, um, for them. For all of the other uh, side of the development pipeline, uh, they use the plugin and they use it uh, heavily, even for uh, uh, customizing the editor uh, completely. If you, um, uh, if you are able to see the desktop uh, of a person working with a real engine, a AAA studio, generally you do not recognize that it is a real engine, they customize it uh, totally. We are talking about pipeline with hundreds of people, so I find it pretty normal to customize your, uh, uh, your main software uh, to the team needs. But as far as I know, there is no AAA company using Python for, uh, for the gameplay. Unless we speak about the server side, if you have a, a game that uh, with its main lodging on the server, there are a lot of companies using, uh, with, using Python with other engines, with other technologies and, uh, and so on. I think I actually know an example. EVE Online is a, is a famous uh, game that uses uh, stackless, stackless Python for uh, a lot of its game logic. So, but that's one. And I've, I've been, I've been I've, from time to time, I, I Google, uh, and it's hard to come up with, uh, with, with a lot of commercial games that sort of use Python for gameplay. There was Civilization 4 used it for, um, for some scripting and, and events and modding. And here and there it will pop up, but it's not a, it's not a big, big, uh, big thing yet, necessarily. Um, so I think that this sort of covers everything we, we sort of chatted before. Uh, we have time for, uh, for a Q&A. Um, uh, maybe some questions from the audience. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so you, right at the end you mentioned uh, stackless Python. Is that, uh, would that be something you've tried or would recommend to, if, if I, let's say I want to build a game in Python, should I use Stackless or can I use Stackless? I think even online it uses Stackless Python, not for the game, but for the, for the server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They told me they use it for both. Yeah. Even stackless for the client part. Honestly, I do not know how they can benefit from stack switching technologies in, in a something that works like a classic uh, engine. So honestly, I, I don't know <laughs> what to answer. Uh, I don't know if someone knows uh, how they're using uh, it. I'm, I'm not that, that uh, into details of, of uh, stackless. Uh, I suppose the issue would be uh, performance. Uh, I really don't see a huge issue with, I'm, I'm making a 3D game. Uh, it's a turn-based game, not, not a full action game, so it has slightly slower real-time requirements. I don't see huge, huge uh, slowdowns from Python. It, it doesn't have a huge performance effect. It's, it's doable. Basically, I'm not sure about stack class. No, no specific info. Hope that helps. There is another question. Okay, thank you for the discussion. It's very interesting. But for, from uh, from what you are speaking about, it seems that graphics is like the 99% of of uh, the problem in here, or like uh, the games mostly consist of graphics. Uh, what about the other parts of the game, or uh, even I don't know, sound, music? Are there no problems in there, or is it just uh, the graphic is such a big problem that we start with that, and until we have solved this, we don't even try uh, anything else? Yeah, we are talking 99 percent about graphics because that's the most compute-intense part of of games, music. 
it's no problem. Music needs a little bit CPU. Um, in, uh, no, I, I mean in the in the whole system, you have the the GPU um, takes most parts, and and if you look at the compute um, power that we see today, uh, uh, Nvidia GTX 1080 um, has has this a power of of um, if you look maybe 20 years ago, you had to to spend billions for the compute power you have in a GTX 1080. So the graphics is the is the compute intense part. And compared to that, music and sound doesn't really take too much away. And let me let me hear his opinion. Uh, yeah, because the the audio engine just has been remade into Godot, so I saw some talk about it. And the the really big problem with audio engine is uh, the lag. Uh, audio engine must really have no lag, otherwise uh, you just you you go out of the game. So writing an audio engine in Python, I would say that every time you have a little garbage collecting things like that, even maybe it won't be uh, visible if you, if you do um, a frame rendering because uh, most of the time it's spent into the graphical card. But for audio engine, you will really see it, feel it really fast. Uh, well, yes, graphics is... Uh, uh, the main part uh, wasting your uh, CPU power. Uh, uh, regarding um, uh, the pure game logic, artificial intelligence, in games we still do not use uh, the real, uh, from the academic point of view, artificial intelligence. We still use uh, uh, cheap uh, tricks like fi uh, finite state machine, behavior tree, something that works perfectly in Python. They are not heavy in, um, in, in resources. Uh, so from my point of view, the uh, Unreal Engine Python plugin works because Unreal Engine take care of uh, the graphics part. So in uh, the demo I showed you yesterday, Python works flaw uh, flawless because the rendering part was done uh, uh, with the engine. But uh, building uh, the um, AI part uh, or, or the um, pure game logic part, it could be absu absolutely doable. And uh, a vast majority of uh, AAA games, uh, like the first installment of Uncharted, you know Uncharted? It's gameplay logic, the vast majority of its gameplay logic uh, has been done in Lisp, in a Lisp dialect. Uh, Left 4 Dead is another one using uh, uh, Squirrel. I think it's uh, another uh, high-level language, uh, scripting language, and so on. It is very common for game designer to use a scripting uh, language. Even Timbleweed Park, you know it? By the same author of... Um, oh, damn. Um, okay, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, it works with, uh, for, the, um, for C and SDL uh, for the rendering part, and then use it again, Squirrel, I think, for the scripting part. For a, a game designer, it is way more proficient to use uh, uh, an A-level language. So, yes, it is the rendering part the most heavy one to invest on. So a uh, different take on that. Uh, I saw a presentation by, by one of the uh, game developer and they were working on this game which has uh, like real war happening in real time. And if you have 1,000 or 2,000 or something objects which, uh, and they, they need to act in every single frame which is 60 frames a second, then that means that you have about 20 uh, instructions that you can execute per uh, thinker. And that's only possible if you use C++. So in these sorts of things, you really need to have performance. So, so but coming on to that, so are, is there any ex experience on using actually Cython? So you could start by, by doing your logic in Python, and then you find the hotspots, and then you rewrite them in Cython. Uh, I, I, can, I, I did try, personally, so I can give you, I can give you that answer. Um, I, I don't... It might be a, a matter of personal preference, so I'm not terribly into Cython. Um, I think it's probably a, a personal preference. It's sort of like another syntax you'd learn. I already know Python and C, so as, as long as I'm doing it, might as well just uh, uh, jump into C. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually holding high hopes for using PyPy in this, in this context. Uh, uh, it seems to me the way to go 
Uh, we didn't discuss the gill here, but there seems to be some potential there for eliminating the gill as well. So uh, I think Cyton is, is if, if, if you can live with Cyton as a sort of separ separate Python-like language, could be the solution. Uh, but there could be other, if you need performance, other ways to, to do it. You could separate your small functionality into some small library. Uh, you could parallelize it in some way, or you could, uh, yeah, or you could y use JIT. So if, if you really, really need performance, uh, uh, just uh, uh, basic Python, yeah, perhaps will not do. Uh, I hope this helps. Hello. Uh, have you ever uh, considered uh, code transpilation from Python to another language for the game logic part uh, in order to embed the, the result into an engine or something? I mean, you, you, you asked why using Python for, for game development? What if you like so much the syntax of Python that you, you could afford to not using advanced uh, features of Python but just some basics? and then transpile it to, to another language? Um, yeah, if, why, why I like Python for, for game pro answer this part first. If, if, for example, a new um, developer comes into the team, it's much easier if we program Python. If a new developer comes with little experience in C++, he can really mess it up. Uh, and kill the whole application. <laughs> I experienced that two times. So that, that really someone messes up, creates memory leaks, and after no one really knows where these memory leaks were created, etc. So using Python solves that a little bit. Not fully, but it's, it's much better. And then the part about transpilation. I'm not a big fan of, of transpilation. The problem is um, at some point you will have to debug something and then debugging code that was transpiled is, is really hard. So uh, that's, that's not, I personally would not um, do that. If, if we see that project is not suitable um, to, for use of Python, I would recommend using another language in the first place. Um, that's much better than transpiling in my opinion. But then you have to, to know that if you have a new developer, who doesn't really um, speak C++, <laughs> you have a risk. Thank you. Uh, okay, it looks like we don't have any more questions. Uh, I, I'd like to thank uh, my co-panelists. Um, I'd like to take the, uh, thank the audience. I uh, hope we have uh, this talk again. Uh, it's not the end of Python and games. Maybe it's just the beginning. And, you know, thank you all. And, See you next time.